Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to go over recursion. Now recursion isn't something Python specific. It's a general programming tactic available in most programming languages, much like how arrays, strings, loops, functions, and to an extent, classes are available in most programming languages. The basic idea of, of recursion is to call a function, execute a set of instructions in the function, test if the, te if the result condition has been met, meaning if the result is exactly what we expected, and from if it's not, call the same function from within the function to make sure that we get the test result that we want. Now, if you think of an infinite loop, that is exactly how it is, much like this image over here, which you've probably seen in most other memes out there. So, without further ado, let's see how this looks in code. So a good example of this is to use factorials. If you use, for example, if you don't know what factorials are, factorials are basically um, a number timesing itself minus one each time. So for example, if I say a factorial of three is equal to three times two times one, and then that gives you six. So four, a factorial of four is four times three times two times one, and that gives you 24 and so on and so on. You get the idea. Now you know what a factorial is if you didn't know what that was. So when using it in terms of recursion, we can actually go ahead and say def factorial. And then once we are here, we can say, okay, so def factorial, and then my, I've got one, one, one input, which is a type of number that I'm gonna feed in. And then in here, if the number is equal to one, then return just one, because there's no one times zero. We don't wanna go below one. We stop at one factorial one is one else we return the number of the factorial times fact times the factorial itself so this is where it gets a little confusing here we've got number let's say that we feed in three it's going to go ahead and take three and then call itself this is what I meant by calling a function from within a function, calling itself from within a function. So it calls itself and then takes three and then feeds in two. So this is going to be three times two. Now, however, it's still not one at this point. So it's going to do three times two. Then on the next step, it's going to do, okay, it's got two for num. If num is equal to equal to one, it's not going to meet this. Else it's going to do two times one. And that's obviously two. So it's going to do three times two, then two times one, and then one, it it stops there. So three times two is six, and then times itself into one, which is still six. And that's exactly how a factorial works. And this, and this is exactly how a recursion works. It basically calls itself. So when you have the execution going on, the first execution stops, and then it takes the value, and the next, and the next execution, which is this part, which is calling itself from itself, uh, can starts up, and then it does the same thing, and again and again and again. The only reason why we're able to get the return from uh, from the child process, uh, for correct term, back into the main process, is because of this return statement. If we didn't have this return statement, this uh, child function call would keep on running infinitely until the program is done or the hardware is crashed. Uh, but because we we have our function written to return a value at all costs, we're able to basically um, go back to the parent process. So looking at this, if we say factorial of the number, let's say that um, my num is equal to, the, I want the factorial of six for example right and my num is equal to 720 so if you want to check that six times five times four times three times two and then the one doesn't really matter but times one 720 yeah so that's how recursion works it can it can definitely help um if you know how to use it if you aren't using your returns properly within a recursion you can potentially call an infinite number of functions within themselves. 
and that would be bad for the hardware. So this is good code if, if you ever look at recursion like this. So um, to illustrate this a little bit, let me go ahead and see if I can work something out. So here's our user. The user executes a function, which then produces a result, which is then fed back to a user. And this is sort of like a standard form of how we've been doing things. In a recursion, though, we have our user who then executes a function, which then executes itself into another function, which then executes itself into another function, which then eventually the last function returns to the previous function from the previous function and goes to the previous function even further, and then eventually back to the user. Now, recursion might seem to be an obvious choice to avoid writing complex code, but to some, writing that code that performs in a recursion manner can be complex to them. So it's really best to gauge exactly who you're working with and who your audience is when writing these codes. And that's it for everything today. I'll see you guys in the next video.